Today we're putting up deer meat that I killed at the first of the week. And I like to do my own deer meat because it makes me feel more connected to it and I don't really feel like it's a good idea for other people to put up my meat because I didn't see it put up and you know you don't know exactly what's how it was handled and you don't know for sure if you're getting the deer that you killed so I just prefer to do it myself and then I know exactly what I've got when I get it put up. I know that it's clean and I know that it was actually the one that I killed. There's nothing wrong with a processor or people having a processor do it but I just prefer to do it this way because it fulfills the whole circle in my mind. That's just the way I like to do it. Also, by doing my own meat, I, like I say, I know for sure that it's been cleaned properly because the way the deer meat tastes and the final product is 100% related to how it was cleaned. A lot of people have eaten deer meat and say they don't like deer meat and most likely they ate meat that was not properly cleaned or not thoroughly cleaned. And I like to, to get every bit of the, the, the fascia and, the, and the, what I call the, the slime that's on the, on the outside of the meat that you have to get that off. And if you don't, you know, it's just not gonna taste as good. It's gonna cook up into whatever dish you're making and it's just not going to be good. It gives it a really foul, gamey taste. And, and deer meat is gamey to some extent. But you get, get it as clean as you possibly can. And that takes the, the, the musky, bad taste out of it. And it still tastes like a deer, but it tastes good. I mean, it's supposed to taste like a deer. It's not supposed to taste like beef or pork or anything else. It's supposed to be taste like a deer, but, but a clean deer. I like to age the deer meat several days. You know, a lot of people put it in a, take it to a meat locker somewhere and that's fine. I, I don't really do that. I cut the meat up in an ice box and salt it really well and just keep it iced for sometimes five, six, seven days. And that kind of, it's kind of like beef. It ages and begins to break down a little bit and that helps the taste of it. Uh, I just think that helps it as opposed to, you know, eating it super fresh right after the kill. And it, it's not bad that way, but I think it's better. It's just like beef, it'll age and it will get better as it ages. I've, unlike, unlike a lot of people, I've never really been bitten with the trophy hunting bug. I like the big deer and I enjoy trying to, trying to locate one and find it, but not at the cost of not getting any meat. The meat is the, the primary purpose. And I think it, just my, in my own mind, I think it kind of cheapens the whole thing if you don't, sh if you, if you won't kill anything other than something really big. And it's fine, you know, if that's, a lot of people want to hunt that way, and that's good if that's what they want. But I want the meat because it's a, a perfectly organic food that, you know, Protein wise can't be beat. And like I say, I like the big deer, but I also like any deer that's that I can kill that I can put up and feed my family and I know where it came from and I know who handled it and I know how it was cared for and I know everything about it. And that's a that's like I say, that's part of the complete circle and part of the self sufficiency aspect of eating good, clean, organic meat with no preservatives and no hormones. You can see how all this fascia and connective tissue wraps around these muscle groups and I like to separate them so that I can get to all that to get it all off. Some people don't do it, some people don't think you need to do it, but that's the way I like to do it because I like just the pure lean meat. I think, it's, I think that's what makes the best product, and that's the only way I know of to get it off. It's a lot of work. A lot of, it takes a lot of time, but in the wind-up, I think it's a much better 
result. And even though it's a lot of work, later on this fall when I'm eating, I'll be smiling because it's good. And this 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 part of the deer is a, a hindquarter or a ham. And it has quite a bit of meat on it, but it also has a whole lot of connective tissue that 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 if you cook cook this in your meat, it this is what people have eaten that say they don't like deer meat. This is it. And you have to get this stuff off. And if you don't, it's got, you know, it's got blood in it and fat and deer fat is not good. It's a, it's a, it has a rancid taste and it's no good. You have to get that stuff off and get it down to the pure red meat in order to, in order for it to be its very best. And once you get it all cleaned, and, and or once the way I do it, once I get it all cleaned down to the red meat and nothing, no fat or nothing, no junk on it, you can you can slice these muscles into steaks, or you can roll them, you know, put the muscle groups back together once they're cleaned and wrap them up and and, and save them as a roast. And we do that. This particular meat we are going to clean it and slice it all into little cubes and we're going to can it. We're going to pressure can it and then that way it keeps for indefinitely really. It's not dependent on power for your freezer. If the power goes off you still got meat you don't have to worry about it. But the best thing about it is it's once it's through canning and your jars are sealed it's done in the jar. You can you and you can do multiple different things with it. You can eat it right out of the jar cold or you can heat it up. You can actually roll a little flour on it and fry it. You can add it you can add it to dishes, anything that you'd add ground beef to, you can add this to and it does just fine. It's just a, a has multiple different uses and it's very quick and easy come home and had a hard day or it's a long day you can open the jar and you can just immediately start eating it and it's really good organic clean protein. I deboned these hams the day that I skinned the deer and cut the deer up. I, I cut the ham or the ham bones out. Another good reason to do that and to be sure you get all this cleaned off is inside those deer hams there is a, uh, a little gland and that right there is it. It's encased in fat, but you can see it. And it's, you don't want to be eating that. It's kind of a, I don't know exactly what it does, but it's a musky, nasty something or other you don't want to be eating. And if you don't, if you don't take these muscles apart and, and clean these things properly, you're cooking that in with your meat and you don't want to do that. Ever so often, Especially if you've got a lot of meat to do, I like to stop and just hone my knife a little bit and keep it sharp because a sharp knife is really important with getting the all the slimy, sticky, white stuff off those deer hams. If you've got a dull knife, it just rolls over top of it and it don't cut it. And a good sharp knife is very important to me anyway. And I never really let mine get too dull that way. All you got to do is just a light honing and then a leather paddle strop, a few strokes on it and then it's right back where it was when I started and it's very, very sharp. Once you get all the gunky stuff cleaned off and you're down to just the red meat, we're going to can this but we're still slicing it against the grain. And at this point you could make steaks or whatever you want to do out of it, but we're going to cut it into like one inch cubes and pack it in jars and can it. But I like to get it down to this clean. It's a lot of work and that appears to be a lot of waste, but that's what it takes to get this really good flavor. In my opinion, this is the way I do it. 
I mean, you can do it however you like, but this is the way I've always done it. And it works really well for me, and the, and the, and the meat is very, very good. Now, the tenderloins, we're not going to can those. I like to keep those out separately and either cut them in half and grill them or slice them and, and fry them. That's the way the girls like it the best is I'll slice it and tenderize it a little bit and then fry it, especially right out of the ice box like this before it's been frozen. That's when it's at its very best and the girls really, really like it. So I still get all the, the connective tissue and the fat and everything off of it and get it down to the red meat just like the rest of the deer. And then if I'm going to fry it, I'll slice it and then tenderize it with either a um, a meat hammer or a, you can actually use the edge of a coffee cup or something and just beat it very lightly just to tenderize it and then roll it in flour and fry it in hot grease and it's really really good if if I'm at deer camp doing this we actually have a an old supermarket cuber and sometimes I'll run the meat through a cuber and that just tenderizes it just that much more uh, but I don't have one here at home, so we use the do it the old way with a, either a meat hammer or a, a coffee cup or an edge of a saucer or something. Okay, now that we've got all the meat cleaned and cut into the right size chunks, now we put them in the jar. And since we're pressure canning, we don't have to sterilize the jar. We did wash them. Now we just pack the meat into the jar. And I like to pack it in pretty tight because it will shrink a little bit. And I learned that, that it'll, it'll shrink and then you'll have a, a pretty big headspace of liquid if you don't pack the meat right up against the, right up into the neck of the jar. And then once you get it packed in there, a teaspoon of salt for a quart. Some people that I know use a tablespoon. A teaspoon seems to be plenty. And it just infuses the salt flavor into the meat as it pressure cans. It's a good idea to wipe the top of the jar with a wet rag to be sure the salt is not on there because that could prevent it from sealing. And you may notice that I'm not putting any liquid in these jars. And some people may freak out about that, but you don't need to because the liquid that's in the meat, the pressure canning process will pull that liquid out. And the jar will be, the liquid will be to the top of the jar. It will be full of its own liquid and it gives it really, really good flavor with the salt infused into the meat. Okay, now we've got the jars in the canner. And got them, I, I like to cook outside on a fish cooker on propane because it comes up to heat quicker and it just seems to be easier. And we pressure these for 90 minutes at 15 pounds. Once, once the 90 minutes is up, we turn the fire off and let the pressure come off naturally in the canners. Uh, if you try to 
manually manipulate the pressure off of it. Sometimes that can suck the jar lids off and it just makes a mess. So we just let the pressure go off on its own. And once the pressure is down to zero, you can take the, the lids off and get the jars out. And we usually stack them on the table in the kitchen and cover them with a towel overnight. And as they cool, they'll begin to seal. And that way, if you let them out overnight, uh, let them set overnight, that way you can tell and be sure they all sealed. If one doesn't seal, and occasionally that happens, uh, you just eat it immediately. Or put it in the refrigerator and you can eat it over a period of days if you want to. But this is the way we've been doing this for quite a few years and it seems to work well for us. Uh, if you've got a, any questions or you do it a different way, uh, feel free to comment below and drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia.